How using near-field probes and a spectrum analyzer help with EMI diagnostics? We know that electronic devices have to be compliant with EMC EMI standards. In the product development phases, if a device fails the EMI standard test limits, diagnostics are performed to locate the source of emissions and are typically done using a spectrum analyzer and near-field probes. This step provides information that's then used to take corrective measures. In this video, we will use a spectrum analyzer and near-field probes to detect a typical radiated emission of a laptop computer and locate the source of emission. Today, we are using the Agilent N9000A CXA Spectrum Analyzer with the EMI measurement application. The CXA is a part of Agilent's X-series of spectrum analyzers and is the most economical model. The sensitivity of the CXA exceeds 160 decibels per meter hertz at 1 gigahertz and it is equipped with a full range preamplifier up to 26.5 gigahertz. It can make CISPR pre-compliant measurements with EMI filer, quasi-peak detector, and logarithmic x-axis. There are two types of near-field probes. One is E-field probes, which detect electric field. The other is H-field probes, which detect magnetic field from emission sources. H-field probes are more commonly used to locate emission sources in near-field test because the H-field fades faster than the E-field as the distance increases. In other words, H-field probes provide better resolution. Today, we are using an Agilent N9311X100 near-field probe set. You can see there are four probes in the N9311X100 set. They are all H-field probes. Probe number one has the largest diameter. It is the most sensitive and therefore has the lowest resolution. It can be used at distances up to 10 centimeters from the unit under test. Probe number two has a higher resolution and a lower sensitivity than probe number one. It is suitable for measurements up to three centimeters. Probe number three is designed for detecting magnetic fields emitting vertically from the surface area of flat units. It has the lowest sensitivity and the best resolution. It enables obstructed parts of the printed circuit board to be measured with approximate two millimeter resolution. Probe number four acts like a current clamp and is designed for detecting surface and circular magnetic fields on conducting paths. Metalized surfaces, plug and socket connectors, cables, and component connections. Okay, let's start the test. For this demonstration, we chose this old laptop computer as our DUT and we need to turn it on. Now let's set the CXA signal analyzer. When we access the EMI receiver mode, we'll see the display looks different than when the CXA is in the normal spectrum analysis mode. In EMI receiver mode, the analyzer is able to make CISPR pre-compliant measurements, which has 6 decibels bandwidth filters, and selectable EMI detectors including EMI average, quasi-peak, and peak detectors. It has predefined test ranges according to EMI standards. Here we chose range 5, 30 MHz to 1 GHz. As mentioned, radiated emissions are usually low-level signals, Therefore, we set the spectrum analyzer to its best sensitivity. Set attenuation to zero and enable the full pre-amplifier. When conducting a far-field EMI pre-compliance test, we can recall the limit lines which are pre-installed in the instrument according to the EMC standards. For instance, in this case, we choose the EN55022 standard, which applies to laptops. In the near field test, EMI standard test limits are not useful because of a number of factors that can affect the test readout, like the probe position and DUT shape. Now let's start the sweeping and adjust the reference level to better observe the signals.
Once the spectrum analyzer settings have been selected, we connect the probes. We begin using probe number one, which has the best sensitivity, to obtain the suspicious signal. The display shows that there are two obvious signals around 800 megahertz to 900 megahertz, even though we haven't placed the probe close to the laptop. These are cellular signals which we'll ignore in our testing as they are not generated by the DUT. We move the probe over the back of the notebook at a distance around 2 centimeters. On the display of the spectrum analyzer, we see the signals which are radiating from the DUT. The signals may vary when we move the probe. We notice there is an obvious signal with high amplitude. Let's try to locate the source of emission of this signal. To do this, we place a marker onto that signal. Its frequency is about 333 MHz. The signal level varies when we move the probe around. Move the probe over the DUT, then place the probe in the location where the 333 MHz signal is at its highest level. After our exam of the DUT is done, we move the probe to the place where we believe the 333 MHz emission is highest. Now we change the probe to probe number 2, which has better resolution. By moving the probe around on the DUT, we can narrow the test range. In this case, the highest level of 333 MHz signal is lower than what we observed by using probe number 1. However, we get better resolution to locate the source of emission. Like before, we place the probe where we obtained the 333 MHz signal at its highest level. Now we remove the cover to perform deeper analysis. It's time to use the probe with best resolution. As mentioned, probe number 3 has lowest sensitivity and the best resolution. This probe helps us see that the emissions are coming from the memory chip slot. It also allows us to examine the memory chips and components point by point while observing the signal level on the spectrum analyzer. The signal varies a lot as the probe moves to different components. We can switch to the spectrum analysis mode to check the signal in depth. Set the center frequency, span and amplitude. And set the attenuation and preamplifier. This allows us to observe the signal better. It looks like a broadband digital signal with center frequency around 333 MHz. We know that it's the clock frequency of DDR333 SD RAM. We continue testing the components and finally locate the components which generate the highest emissions. To summarize, for this demonstration, we've used the N9000A CXA with EMI measurement application and probe set. This configuration is the most cost-effective X-series signal analyzer solution for performing pre-compliance conducted and radiated emissions testing for both commercial and mill standard requirements. For more information on conducting emission tests using the CXA EMI measurement application and probe set, please visit www.agilent.com slash find slash CXA dash EMI.